All right, we'll get started here. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, my name is Brendan Woodruff. I'm the co-chair of the Operations and Engagement Subcommittee. Uh, we've been hosting a number of webinars over the last couple months um, on various training topics, and we thought that before the holiday season comes up, we'd do one on zero waste meeting and event planning uh, so that you can take the tips and tricks that you learned today and apply them to your offices going forward uh, as we enter the holiday season. Uh, we've got holiday parties, maybe Thanksgiving, Halloween, things like that. Um, and they're, they're going to be good tips that you can use year-round um, that will make a, a pretty good uh, difference when it comes to your EO4 reports. A couple of uh, housekeeping things here. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, uh, and it will be put on the Green New York website afterwards for folks to view. Uh, we'll also be sending out a link to everyone on our list serve so they'll have access to the recording as well. If you have any questions while we're going through the webinar, uh, put them in the chat box. Uh, they'll come to me and we'll answer those at the end. And if you haven't registered for the Green New York Forum uh, coming up next week yet, make sure you do that soon and I'll get all of the logistical information out to you. So without further ado, um, today's presentation is going to be by uh, Kayla Montani and Amy Bloomfield of the Bureau of Waste Reduction and Recycling here at DEC. So take it away. Hi guys, as Brendan said, so my name is Kayla Montani. I work in the Bureau of Waste Reduction and Recycling in the Recycling and Outreach section. And my colleague Amy is going to introduce herself. Yep, and I'm Amy Bloomfield. I also work with Kayla in the Bureau of Waste Reduction and Recycling at the New York State DEC. Um, next slide. So let's just go over a little bit what we'll be talking about. First, we want to, um, everyone knows the webinar is about zero waste events. Um, we want to give you some tips and tricks on that. So first, we just want to talk about what exactly do we mean by zero waste? What are the benefits of zero waste meetings and events? And then what do you actually do to have a zero waste event? And then we'll show you a couple of examples and um, ways that we've used these tips in action. And then we'll talk about any further trash talk and questions and answers. Next slide. So first, we'll get started by explaining, you know, what do we mean by zero waste? So basically what that means for your meetings and your events that you'll be planning, everything at the end should be reusable, recyclable, or compostable. Your events don't have to be totally zero waste. You can do something that's low waste and be working towards zero waste. And what we don't want is for this to scare anybody or scare anyone off. You can take small steps and make small changes and those all lead to a big difference. So we don't want anyone to think you have to take everything on all at once. Um, so what are the benefits of zero waste? Why, why do we want people to change their behavior and why do we want to do this? Um, it's really good for employee engagement and getting people involved and thinking more about sustainability. Um, we also, as um, state agencies, we want to lead by example um, and show what we're doing to be green and conserve natural resources. It also helps you to um, work towards fulfilling your EO4 waste reduction goals. Um, and there are some other benefits as well, like you may have less trash to deal with at the end of an event or meeting. And a lot of the time when you move towards zero waste, um, you'll actually notice that the snacks can be healthier, which is a, a positive or a negative depending on your opinion. <laughs> Um, but anyways, Kale and I could talk on this topic for hours, but we only have mm -hmm. half an hour, so um, we'll keep moving. So next slide. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're actually at a meeting and event, um, what are some things, what are the first things you want to start thinking about? And the very first thing you should think about is some really good signage and ways to direct people towards what they're supposed to be doing. Um, you want to check with your recycling hauler. Um, do you see what 
your program accepts and makes some signs, and we'll have some examples of signs later on. Um, and be really specific about what you can compost if you have it available. We know that everyone's different. Not everyone has access to compost or the ability to compost. Maybe you're working towards it, um, but signage is a good first step. And so the next thing that you want to um, make sure you have at your meetings and events is good bin placement. So what we mean by that is that you want to make sure that you have your recycling and trash bins or containers, whatever you might have, next to each other at your meeting or event. And also to have your compost uh, bin there next to those all grouped together if you have uh, composting available, as Amy said. So the reason why this is important to have these bins grouped together is because when people see a bin and they have their hands full of stuff, they're just going to, most people just put whatever is in their hands in whatever the closest bin is. So you want to make sure that you have your bins grouped together, that way people can easily and clearly see what is for garbage, what is for recycling, and what is for composting, and the signage will help direct them to the appropriate bin. And, and so, then, oh, go ahead, Kayla. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so, and then the next thing we we're going to also talk about is disposable items. So, after you have your signage and your bin placement, you want to take a look at what types of disposable items you can remove from your meetings and events. So, you want to, some ideas for you, um, you want to try to decrease or not use bottled water at all remove single-use coffee pods. You can buy condiments and coffee station items, you know, beverages, you know, refreshment table things in bulk. And buying in bulk can decrease packaging waste and can also, it can also save money. Um, another idea would be to have water coolers with ice, um, you know, at your refreshment stations, asking attendees to bring their own filled water bottle or, you know, refillable water bottle. You can have, you know, a coffee pot instead of the single-use coffee pods. So all small steps to remove those disposable items from your meetings and events. And then as far as reusable items, if there's anything that you can think of that people might be able to bring or that you can provide, um, we found that asking if you do have a coffee station, asking people to bring their own mug is one of the easiest things to do. Um, we have a pretty good success rate with that. And um, if people know they're not going to get coffee unless they have a mug, uh, it's a pretty good uh, <laughs> incentive to bring your own mug, and it's it's a pretty easy one for people. Um, like Kayla was saying, um, anything you can do up front, asking people to bring their filled water bottles, anything you can provide, like cutlery or um, plates, um, it's. It's really good to think about, and even if you just start with asking people to bring their mug and only five people bring their mug, I think that that's still a success, so. And then on that same reusable item topic, one of the things that you can do in your office is you can start a kind of community or communal cabinet for event and meeting items and ask people to donate or kind of build by donation, which works out great if people, you know, are in the mood for spring cleaning or anything like that, cleaning out their cabinets. Some things you could have are tablecloths. Um, as Amy mentioned, you might have mugs, you might have plates in there. Anything, any type of reusable item that people could be able to go to this cabinet and get and wash and bring back um, after their meeting or event. And also a great thing to do is to make it known that no single use items will be available at your meeting or event. Um, and once people realize that those items won't be provided, uh, we found that they're actually more likely to remember their reusable items. Um, yeah, so you just want to make sure that if you, you know, if you do want to do these things that you make it known um, 
that people should be bringing things with them and you want to make sure people know they don't have to do everything. Like Kayla said in the beginning, we don't want to scare anyone with the word zero waste. But anything you can do, any little thing um, is, is good. Next slide. And so this is just a quick slide. If you are looking for more ideas, uh, on the Green New York webpage, there is a full page on greening your meetings and events. So there's a lot of great resources and tips here at this webpage as well for people to use. Next slide. So this is an example of signs for the bin. So that was something that Amy had mentioned. And so these are just a couple of examples of signs that you can use. So your signs for your meetings and events can range from anything that's very simple. You can have a list of items on your recycling, trash, or composting bins, or you could make a more detailed sign like the one on the right. And again, it is up to you and the level of involvement that you would like to have. And as Amy and I keep stating, any small bit helps. And so we don't want anyone to feel overwhelmed by this detailed sign. Um, even simple direction for people is better than nothing. Next slide. So the next thing we wanted to show you guys is how we actually put these things in action because that's really what people want to see and what they want to hear about. So some, we do have some examples here for everybody. So on the top left, you'll see, so this whole slide is about our zero waste meeting and events in action. So on the top left is an example from an event that we went to. And again, your setup does not have to be as elaborate as this, but you'll see that all of the bins are lined up next to each other. They all have signs on them. I mean, it's a picture is so small, you can't read the signs, but they all have signs on them. And then also at that, at that event, we had waste station monitors. And what that person is, is a person or people that volunteer to take shifts throughout the event, and they help guide people to the correct bin to reduce contamination in the recycling stream and the composting stream. So that is an idea for your meetings and events is to have a waste station volunteer to help guide people. Amy? And so some of the other pictures are from a um, conservation day that we had. And conservation day is um, at the DEC, it's sort of our employee outing. Um, in the top middle picture, you can see that's all of the trash, compost, and recycling we have left um, from a party of about almost 100 people. So that, that's pretty good. Um, and we had, let's see, in the top, okay, in the bottom left, the little table tent. Um, we had some table tents made talking about food waste. Um, and we had those set up on the table as well as a poster to get people thinking about not wasting food. Um, and then the, the bottom middle, um, that's our waste station. So it's not as fancy as the, the Nature Fest one Kayla talked about, um, but we have our signs and we have our compost. In the back, you can see we have a waste station where our sustainability members helped wash um, plates and cutlery. And um, I also wanted to point out in the last sign for recycling, it had film plastic and um, snack wrappers on there. So those shouldn't be going in your, your regular recycling, but we, we have special programs. Um, so we collect those and return the film plastic to retail, and we use TerraCycle for snack bag recycling. Um, and I think that's that's most of the pictures. We also wanted to point out if you're going to have a wash, wash station um, that the women don't always end up doing the dishes because that tends to happen. So we just want to make a little point there that everyone should be helping out uh, with the dishes at the end. Next slide. 
Okay, so we talked about some things you can do. We talked about how we put it to action, and we wanted to talk about how to make it fun because we talk about all of these things, but you also have to you know, engage people and get people involved, and the more fun something is, just the better it is all around. So one of the things we do is, or one of the things you can do also, is that we sometimes will have raffles. So an example will be, uh, you know, each person that brings a full set of reusables to an office event gets entered. They might win something like a reusable bag, a reusable, you know, zero waste lunch kit. Um, Amy has a picture where on the left that is a prize that she had as part of her zero waste lunch day event that she's going to talk about. So what we found is that once there's a raffle, you can have a prize, you know, you could do a little quiz as part of this, uh, you know, a quiz with a prize. And once there is that type of, uh, you know, involvement or engagement, people really seem to participate more, they enjoy it, and it really does make it more fun. And then Amy? Yeah, so like Kayla was saying, you can also <clears throat> have a very specific day set aside for something like this. So at our office in New Pulse, we had a zero waste lunch day um, where people pledged to bring a zero waste lunch. They were entered into a raffle and we had a really nice little educational display and our regional director picked from the raffle and the winner one, the little lunch kit in the picture on the left. And then in the, the photo on the right, that's an example of sort of working towards zero waste. You can see in the background, we have the coffee carafe, um, and we've bought some things in bulk, like juice and cream instead of single serving. People have their reusable um, utensils and plates. A few people have reusable mugs. I mean, you can see there's still napkins. Someone brought something from Dunkin' Donuts. So we wanted to show this is an example. You don't, like we said, it doesn't have to be all or nothing, but every little thing counts. Next slide. So if you're going to do all these things, you want to make sure people are aware um, well beforehand. So what we like to do is send office emails and let attendees know that it's going to be a low waste or zero waste meeting and to bring their mug or water bottle. And um, yeah, have a couple reminders leading up to your event uh, so everyone can be prepared. And something, another thing that you could add to your email is this image that we have on the left. And that is something that we can provide to people that would like it. Brendan can send that out. So it's a helpful reminder for people to show some examples of what they might be able to bring to your meeting or event that can help them reduce their waste. And another thing that we like to do in our emails or flyers, whatever it is that we send out, we like to use some catchy or fun phrases to help get the message across. There was one that I used uh, this year where we had an Earth Day event and I put in the flyer, no plate, no cake, and everybody likes cake, so people brought their plate. <laughs> so just another fun way to put a little spin on it. And Amy's going to show you another fun thing that she does. Uh, next slide. Um, so if people are taking action and they're bringing their mugs or they're bringing a zero waste lunch and they're going above and beyond, um, you want to make it known and you want to highlight these people, not just to make them feel good, but they can also inspire other employees and other employees may come to them for advice. Um, so these photos are, are an example. Um, Leading up to our zero waste lunch, I did little interviews with a couple staff who I know are kind of sustainability heroes and they bring a zero waste lunch um, on the regular. So we sent out um, little interviews with tips and tricks and um, everyone interviewed had their other staff coming to them saying, oh, I love the way you did your lunch, especially um, 
Marianne with her jar salad in the middle there. Everyone was really excited about her jar salad and asking questions. So it's um, it's really nice just to recognize when people are going above and beyond. Next slide. So um, yeah, that's about it. Here's our contact information and. Yeah, we just want to reiterate that um, no matter the size or the location or the audience, um, anything you're doing to move towards less waste and moving in the direction of zero waste uh, is, a, is a good thing and you shouldn't be scared off by the word zero waste. And if you have any questions or um, maybe you have some tips for us Two that we can share with people, definitely uh, feel free to reach out to us. And we just always want to make sure, you know, we say that you can use any of the tips or steps that we mentioned, you know, we can use use them by themselves, you can use them in any combination that you would like to, and we always like to reiterate, you don't have to do absolutely everything in order to make a difference. And that's it. Thank you. Correct. Thank you so much, uh, Kayla and Amy. That was fantastic. Um, so, do we have any questions? If you do have questions, please type them into the chat box here and uh, we'll get to them. And we do have one comment here, just a second. All right, Jody, I've, I've unmuted you. Can you? Yeah, can you, uh, can you hear me? Yep, yep perfect. Great. I, I just wanted to touch a bit on reducing waste for meetings. Most of what, what you presented was wonderful, but it, it tended to relate more to food events. Um, and I think there are some great opportunities for reducing waste at meetings, especially paper use. And so some of the things that we've done at DASNY, we've um, we communicate with all the people that are delivering stuff to us, like vendors when they come to do trainings, that we prefer them to share the links to the materials so people can choose to print out the materials for themselves or not. And we, um, we don't provide agendas and packets of materials to everyone, like printed out packets and printed out agendas. We focus on an electronic display so that we can put the agenda up at the beginning and talk about the agenda and then get into the material. But we also send out that agenda and material prior to the meeting and say to people, we, we want you to be prepared for this meeting. Here's the material in advance. If you need a paper copy for your own style of working, please bring a paper copy. We will not provide any. That is a really good point. We did focus a lot on food and paper. Paper is another big one. And yeah, those were some really good points. Thanks, Jody. Sure. I yeah. love other ideas, too, if anyone's got more. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think we focused on the food a little bit for the, on the holiday party focus, and we missed the paper one, so thank you. Mm -hmm. And just another thing with uh, meetings here as well, um, I know a lot of people like to provide bottled water for meetings and things like that. Um, under EO 18, state agencies, on, except in specific certain circumstances, are not supposed to be providing bottled water. So one thing you can do is see if you can find, I know for some of our meetings, uh, we'll have pitchers, we'll fill those with water and ice, and we'll put glasses out. Uh, so if water is expected at a meeting, um, instead of providing bottled water, you can always do that. Um, and so, you know, if, if finances are an issue or something, you can look into um, what you can find for uh, some sort of cheap pictures or things like that. We do have and a question. Actually, this is Jody. Okay. One more thing yep. about reducing paper for for events. Like uh, we have a lot of little impromptu gatherings for people retiring or having babies or retiring and having babies, <laughs> <laughs> and and um, we reuse a lot of our decorations. So we have a closet here at DASB that has banners, yay, you're retiring, and happy birthday, and all these other banners, and some decorations to hang up, but we, we reuse them. So you could do the same thing for, for holiday parties. You could have a little cache of holiday party decorations that can be use, reused every time until they start to look kind of wimpy. Then, you know, invest in new <laughs> ones, but reusing them for more than one thing. And we also tell people that we cannot use any kind of plastic tablecloths 
um, they should use reusable tablecloths or paper ones if they really want want to have something single use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great, and that's also another excellent point. And kind of goes along with that communal cabinet idea. So we also same thing. Uh, like I said, great point. We have that here at our office for the party supplies and get yeah, the reusable tablecloth. So that's an excellent idea as well. Thank you. And we do have a question that came in. Um, it says, I see you referred to a lot of staff-oriented events. Do you have any specific advice on how to encourage students to reduce waste in working with outside vendors for large events? Mm. Jody, I think this one might be a little more in your wheelhouse. <laughs> working with students on outside events? And uh, working with outside vendors as well. I think regarding the meeting thing, I, I, it's, it's a, for us it's been a matter of clarity. When we have a training session, for example, or are bringing someone in for some event, we try to get in the habit, <laughs> sometimes we miss, of, of saying, yes, we're so glad you're coming, please don't bring any papers with you. And we say it in a very kind way, you know, um, to try and reduce the paper. We we do like business cards, we do like the conversation, but we want we want them to realize they shouldn't be bringing packets and packets. Um, transferring that into other parts of our business has been a little tougher, uh, but we're working on it. I'm not sure about the student side of things, though. I think with students, the um, the environmental message really resonates with them, and that doesn't work for everybody, honestly. But with the students, it really, really does. The message of making the future greener um, and starting to use sustainability practices, like easy things they can do, like carrying a reusable mug in your backpack or a reusable bottle. Um, I think that that message is really important and means a lot to students. Um, and like I said, it, it doesn't work in every situation, um, but I think in that one, it, it really does. Mm -hmm. No plate, no pizza. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think with the students, you, you know, especially perhaps college students, they always like free things. I mean, you just mentioned the pizza. You, I guess thinking of ways to engage students more. So we had mentioned the raffle or the quizzes or things like that. That might be an idea. Um, and in terms of vendors, I know that for some of the work that uh, other staff does here, when they're communicating with vendors, they make the event goal known very clear uh, right up front. And that also helps them to find the appropriate vendors. I know sometimes there's not a lot of flexibility in who we might be able to work with and things like that, but I think making it known up front what your goals are really helps. And I think one of the things, too, that you could use as a resource is the Green New York website. So we have the page on um, zero waste meetings and events and things. Um, with the vendor, you could even you know, send them a link to that and say, these are the things that we do for in-house things. You know, we appreciate it if our contractors look through this and um, try and uphold the same standards that we have. And are there any other questions or ideas or thoughts that have popped into people's heads? I know I'm not thinking about Halloween candy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so if you do have any more questions going forward, um, you have uh, Kayla and Amy's contact information. Uh, most of you have mine as well. I can always route the questions to the appropriate people. Um, and again, we're gonna have some resources to send around. We do have the uh, landfill signage that you can put on your uh, garbage bins, and we have uh, sample staff profiles that Amy talked about as well that we can send around and share to you so you can see how those were done. And that more or less image, too, for the yeah. reasonable. And we will have that as well. That's a really good one. Um, and that one really works well if you include that in the email to people for an event. You know, there's cake, here's what you can do, um, and things like that. So with that, um, a big thank you to Kayla and Amy for presenting today. They did a fantastic job, and it's always good um, to have the experts here. So thanks to everybody. And um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a good one. Thank you, guys. Thanks.